The United Kingdom is home to many different theme parks and attractions. Now, on my latest video, I got the request, can you do the UK? And then I thought, why not? I've collected a total of 15 of the best roller coasters in the United Kingdom. And in this video, I'm including Ireland also. So bear with me, I may sound like an idiot today because I got a sore throat and stuffy nose. But the only thing you have to do is sit back, relax and enjoy this video. And now coming in at spot number 15, we have Storm Chaser at Paulson's Park. And Storm Chaser really is one of the best Mark Rice family spinning roller coasters. This really Really was a great addition for this park. Even though Storm Chaser isn't really the biggest roller coaster in the world, it still has a very lengthy layout. Storm Chaser features the signature Mark Wright spinning coaster trains. Storm Chaser's layout mainly features many sharp twists, turns, and a few helixes. And what really makes this coaster great is the intense pacing on this ride. Storm Chaser combines uncontrollable spinning with a decent pace throughout the whole ride. Such a great coaster, in my opinion. And moving on at spot number 14, we have Dragon's Fury at Chessington. And let me tell you, this layout just never ends. Dragon's Fury is an old but gold spinning roller coaster by Mawa Rides. And the train design on this roller coaster is only one cart with four riders. And that's why all of the elements are so sharp and out of control. This ride features everything from awesome overbanks, little airtime humps, and twists and turns. Combined with a decent amount of spinning, a lengthy layout, this is really a great coaster that is a little bit better than Storm Chaser. And now coming in at spot number 13, we have Megaphobia at Oakwood Theme Park. Oakwood Theme Park in Wales has a very great CCI wooden coaster. And the first drop and sharp turn has actually just gotten a retrack. Compared to its size, Megaphobia really has a very long layout combining airtime hills and strong lateral forces on the turns. And this coaster really has a great and sharp drop, especially if you sit in the back row. But this ride experience unfortunately comes with a cost. This wooden roller coaster, of course, comes with a bit of rattle. I shouldn't say rattle, a bit of shaky shaky, and that could be unpleasant for many people. And now coming in at spot number 12, we have the Swarm at Fob Park. And correct me if I'm wrong, I think this was the second BM wing coaster ever in the world. The Swarm was the first BM wing coaster with the signature wing over dive drop and this is really a great way to start a roller coaster the rest of the layout on swarm mainly contains decent floating and big elements and most of these elements is combined with near misses such as foot choppers and head choppers my favorite inversion on the swarm is the hardline roll over the station the only two negatives about the swarm i have is the short layout and then the slow pace and moving on at spot number 11 we have saw the ride at fort park and yes this could be a polarizing opinion but in the front row this ride is so unpleasant that i wouldn't even put it in in the top 15 in the uk and on the second row i can just barely survive now that the eurofighter rattle is out of the way let's talk about this awesome ride experience saw the ride is a great and heavy themed roller coaster the layout features a great small indoor section with a sharp drop sharp turn and a hang time fill inversion and after that saw the ride takes you outside and gives you a great beyond vertical drop combined with awesome sharp inversions and sharp airtime hills that gives great positive g-forces and negative g-forces please skip this ride lap bars and now at spot number 10 we have SIK at Flamingo Land. SIK features the iconic 10 inversion roller coaster layout by Intamin. But on top of that, this ride experience is enhanced with lap bars on the train. Yes! And there's not much to say about this ride experience. It mainly focuses on inversions. But if we need to talk about forces and experience on the ride, it really doesn't offer anything crazy. SIK just gives some mild floater pops here and there, and then it gives some mild positive G forces on the inversions. But this roller coaster is really known for the quadruple hardline road that gives hang time throughout the whole train of course and combined with lap bars and you got this out of your seat experience and now at spot number nine we have stealth at fort park and this is an iconic intimate accelerator launch coaster and the only problem about this ride experience is how unreliable it is so if you see it running run over there right now this coaster has the fastest acceleration in the world from 0 to 80 miles power then that is 130 kilometers power in only 1.8 seconds so we got a world-class launch and then the flojector airtime fill top hat and then the brakes hit so the short layout on stealth is why it's of course placed here coming in at spot number eight we have wicker man at alton towers and this really overall is a great family frill wooden coaster wicker man's layout is surprisingly very different from other coasters by gci if you look at spaghetti and meatballs it is so close to wicker man's layout but overall wicker man features a great lengthy layout combining a lot of lateral positive g-forces wicker man also has a great floater airtime first drop combined with a few airtime humps here and there wicker man also flies in and out of this huge cool looking figure three times and now at spot number seven we have Kukulan at Emerald Park and this coaster is one of my exceptions because it's placed in Ireland. Kukulan is overall a great roller coaster made by the Gravity Group. Kukulan has a very lengthy layer combining floater and small ejector pops here and there and would you look at that this roller coaster also has a decent size compared to other coasters in the UK and if you have ridden a Gravity Group wooden coaster before you know it has a bit of rattle but this rattle personally only intensifies the experience for me but this really isn't one of these coasters I could marry for and they are quite intense especially for my headman 
Mountain. And now at spot number 6 we have Nemesis Inferno at Fog Park. And yes, this really is a great and very underrated roller coaster made by B&M. And unfortunately this roller coaster lives under the shadow of another one I won't mention right now. But Nemesis Inferno is part of the famous B&M inverted coaster model that is known for its intense positive g-forces. Even though Nemesis Inferno is one of the smallest B&M inverts in the world, it really has a very punchy layout. This coaster is very fast paced combining sharp and positive g-force heavy inversions all over the place. This coaster was really one of the most surprising roller coasters in the UK. So don't sleep on Nemesis Inferno. And just cracking the top 5 spot we got Icon at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. And not to sound harsh but this just feels like a slower version of an intimate blitz coaster. Icon is a lengthy multi-launch coaster made by Mug Rides. This ride features many different twists and turns combining floater and small ejector airtime pops over the whole ride layout. And on top of that you have two hang time filled inversions. But I'm sorry to say this, these launches are just the slowest in the business. And remember this, this ranking of Icon is not based on the Enzo spinning seat. And coming in at spot number 4 we have Nafiana Force at Emerald Park. And this is of course also one of my exceptions because it's placed in Ireland. But this roller coaster really showcases what Bacoma can do with the newest suspended frill coaster. And we can of course call this model the SLC Redemption. Nafiana Force features a lengthy, punchy, positive G-Force heavy, negative G-Force heavy, just overall a great ride layout. And if you haven't really experienced airtime on a suspended roller coaster, I really recommend you to try it. Don't really know what to say about this roller coaster. The airtime is great, the inversions are floaty. It's just overall a great coaster, but not world class, if you know what I mean. It isn't body crushing positive G-Forces, and it isn't ejector airtime. And now just coming in at third place, we got Nemesis Reborn at Alton Towers. And this roller coaster just got completely retracked and rethemed. Nemesis Reborn is just an iconic BM inverted roller coaster. Nemesis Reborn starts the experience by dipping down into a sharp corkscrew inversion. And after that, you have a short but very punchy BM invert layout. This roller coaster is really fast paced. The turns are very sharp and strong, and also the inversions are crazy. The only negative thing about Nemesis Reborn, in my opinion, is the short layout. But this roller coaster doesn't have the biggest ride area, and it is actually docked down in the trenches. And coming in at second place, we got the Smiler at Alton Towers. And what can I say? This really is an iconic infinity coaster by Gerslauer. The Smiler currently holds the record for most inversions on a roller coaster with 14. This roller coaster also features two lift hill, an incline, and a vertical lift. And the rest of the layout is just a twisted mess of track of mainly positive G-Force heavy inversions. But you also have a few airtime pops here and there. And this roller coaster also has a weird and psychotic theme. The Smiler is just overall a relentless and lengthy ride experience. But the over the shoulder restraints on the Gerslauer trains aren't the best. And without any doubt, at spot number one, we have Hyperia at Fort Park. The tallest and fastest coaster in the UK really has some world class roller coaster elements. In my opinion, Hyperia has the best first drop in the world, especially if you go in the back row. A twisted 180 degree vertical drop is just crazy. And then this crazy big turnaround element, I don't even know what this is. It starts as an outer bank airtime hill, but then it leaves you on your head. And then after that, you have the most hang time filled stall in the world. The only critique Hyperia can get is its length. If it had one or two more airtime elements, it could have been one of the best roller coasters in the whole world. And now if we quickly look at the parks with the most coasters on the list, we have four park in the lead with five coasters. And then after that, we have Alton Towers with three coasters. And then we have the wild card Emerald Park with two coasters. And now we finally reached the end of this video. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Have you missed some coasters? Let me know. Let me know. And at the end of the day, I'm always gonna say bye bye.